Okay, so hear me out. 3D printers. They are so affordable now, and in a world of old bike tinkering, I really think they're a valuable tool. Whether that's for replacing old plastic parts, or designing completely new ones, I love them. I've done a small amount of 3D modelling before, and a bit of printing, but things have really kicked up a gear now. Recently, Creality reached out to me and offered to send me one of their 3D printers. I couldn't be more excited. They sent me their Ender 3 Neo printer. A simple to assemble, genius bit of kit. I've never actually printed anything myself before, but assembling this printer and doing my first prints were a piece of cake. The assembly guide was easy to read and understand, and the menu functions are pretty intuitive. Without even looking at the guide, I quickly worked out how to level the bed and get the PLA set for printing. A little about this specific printer and the material I'm using. The Ender 3 Neo is one of their entry level machines. It features a full metal extruder for smooth feeding, a durable build surface and enhanced steadiness thanks to the mould springs. It's a quiet machine measuring between 45 and 50 decibels and I can definitely verify that as I've had a print running while I slept a few meters away. Another neat little feature is the power outage feature. Power cut, no trouble, just start printing right where you left off. You can print objects roughly 220 millimeters square to a height of 250 millimeters and to an accuracy of 0.1 millimeters. And it's definitely living up to those standards so far. Lastly, the material I'm using is a white 1.75 millimeter diameter PLA which is an inexpensive, strong option, but it is considered biodegradable, so it might not be the best option for constant exposure to the outdoors. We'll see. I've worked on a few models now, and it's super easy to import them using Creality's own software. Just make sure your 3D model is exported in the right format. I use an STL file, and then I import it into Creality's print suite, Orientate it, make copies, select the print quality you need, run a slice, and then export the G-code. Easy. Okay, so examples. We need examples. Remember a couple of weeks back when I messed up cutting the threads in a fork? Well, that's sorted now. I spent a bit of time designing a holder and top cap in a 3D modeling software, trying to get all the right measurements. There's always gonna be a few little things to change, so I printed a prototype on a quick print and found I'd made everything just a little bit too tight. A few tweaks later, and some added bevels, and this little beauty was born. I've made it so that I can screw down the top cap lightly to hold the die in place, and the tolerances are pretty damn tight on the guide so that the die has to cut straight. One trial later, and I think it works. I managed to cut good threads into the steerer without wandering off at all. Mission success. Then it was time for the DX Thummies. You know after 30 years, these shifters have taken a battering. Some are missing their top caps, and some are missing their cable housings. Not anymore. The top cap wasn't so hard to model, it's pretty simple. But the cable housing, yikes, that was a tough one for me. Trying to get all those angles in place to make it curve around the shifter and bars wasn't easy but I actually managed it with only one alteration. These were some of the first things I trialed on the printer 
and something I quickly worked out was make sure you orientate the models properly. The first couple of prints went wrong when I tried to print them from the bottom up, but of course you can't print floating material. The printer can handle some unsupported structures, but it can't just start printing in thin air. A couple of misprints later and I have some DX dummy parts. The Enter 3 coped with all the bevels I added really well and the end product I'm really impressed with. So much so, I went and bought a set of Dior Thummies too. The MT60 versions. The cable guides seemed to be a very close match, but the top caps needed a little remodelling. They're thinner than the DX ones, with more of an angle than a bevel on top. The one print I've done so far looks pretty good, but I need to make a few tweaks to get it to sit flush. A couple more models I printed with the Ender 3 were my Basil Rack Adapters. I made these up a while ago and I've already printed them off with an old printer, but I wanted to see how the prints differed. It's amazing how much these printers have come on. The older printer, which I think cost a few thousand, couldn't really handle the bevels that well and the tolerances were a little bit iffy. But now, printing with the Ender 3 Neo, a printer you can pick up for a couple of hundred pounds is amazing. I'm actually so impressed at how affordable this print quality is. I did really try and stress test this machine with a bigger bike part. I've been working on the Rally Bomber Chain Guard. On a quick print, it took a good seven hours to print and I was really getting close to the bed size and the limits of the unsupported print. Normally, I would have selected the option to print a thin scaffolding, which you can then break away to support prints across gaps. For the prints I've done so far, I hadn't found that option, and it's just about coped, but for the chain guard, it struggled. It gave the print a good go, and did manage to make it to the end, but the outer ring of the chain guard is not pretty. The unsupported material fell down in parts and made a bit of a mess, but hey, I'm still learning here. And literally as I type this, I've found the support menu. Look out for another model soon then. See, this is what the learning process is all about. I knew I made a mistake somewhere. So to sum up, Creality, you've made my year with this little gift. It's amazing. I'm so impressed at how a 3D printer at this price point can produce models of this quality. It was so easy to build and it's so easy to use. In my world, messing with all these old bike parts is going to open up so many possibilities. Not only is it helping me keep old parts alive, it's helping me improve my 3D modelling. Just in the last few weeks, I've learnt so much. I honestly love this printer and would recommend it to anyone looking at getting started in the world of 3D printing like me. If you want to know more about the printer or any of Creality's other products, please check the link in the description. If you end up getting one, let's see the models. Thank you again to Creality the possibilities I have with this printer seem endless. It means a lot. So yeah, if you're looking at buying a 3D printer, support the company that supported me. Thank you.